a Grammy award-winning singer, songwriter, and drummer from the popular band Hootie and the Blowfish. Yes. And he has a new memoir called Swimming with the Blowfish, where he talks about the highs and the lows of fame. Please welcome Jim Sony Sonafelt. Howdy. Jim. Surviving with the Blowfish. Now, I remember, oh man, Hootie and the Blowfish was one of the biggest bands of the 90s. Like, we knew all of your songs. And I didn't know that you had David Letterman to thank for that. Well, he certainly put us on a, uh, a scale that we never imagined. I think we can get credit for being the guy that tipped the first, you know, domino in that row. Really? Yeah, and we were a band that had worked hard. We spent five years writing and playing clubs. And, uh, you know, in my high school growing up, and we grew up, uh, right nearby Illinois, each other. Yeah. It said on the on the wall in the in the gym. It said, uh, "Luck is where preparation meets opportunity." And when yes. David Letterman called us, I think that's when we got lucky. Uh -huh. You know, we had prepared, but without his call, we were probably still toiling in clubs. And you know, we could see after we had our three and a half minutes on his late night show in front of six million people, uh, our trajectory had a massive change. I mean, you just you blew up. Wow, and you just, you, it, then everybody around the world knew who you were. We went and saw it. We, we were on a, uh, in a van at first, then we got a tour bus, and then we were in jets going around to play for our troops overseas. We got to play in Australia, South Africa, you, you, places we never imagined, places we couldn't pronounce. Wow. <laughs> and so you were out there and you were doing all this playing, you were known by everybody, but then in your memoir, you talked about your addiction to drugs and alcohol. Uh, and you, you said that it got worse as the band's popularity got, got bigger, then your addiction got worse. Can yeah. you tell us about that? Well, it, it's easy to ride the wave of, of fame and fortune. Uh, yeah. It's what you've dreamed for and worked for so hard. And it's kind of when we started declining and when the next band took our place and I was starting a family, I struggled with what to do with that. I could see our best years in the rear view, right. and I didn't know how to deal with that. And alcohol and, and then drugs always meant a celebration to me. They were always like a, uh, an escape. And when that happened, but we were on the way down, it didn't make much sense. Yeah. I was the last guy left holding up the beer bottle or, or the whiskey bottle, and uh, everyone else was gone, and, and I was left alone. I isolated. I tried to figure out what it meant or yeah. deny that I needed help when I needed help. You know, um, you have now been sober because you got the help. You've been sober for 18 yeah. years. Wow. 18 wow. years. That, I mean, going from, going from being addicted and your life just like going down, going to hell, to now being sober for 18 years, what was it that made you go get help? Well, I only had a, a firm grip on one thing, like I said, denial. Right. I, I can do this, I got this, I don't need your help, I don't have a problem until I finally got desperate enough and it hurt enough. And weirdly, the last intervention I had was not from someone who had years of wisdom and training in this, it was from my four-year-old daughter, Cameron Sonnefeld. And I was in rough shape, as I had been known to be at that time. It was 10.30 on a Sunday morning. I had not made it back into my house. I was in the music studio. Okay. She came out to innocently ask Dad, you know, what, what's up? And she said, Dad, what are you doing? Mm. And I always could have an answer for that. I could make up a little something to get by, right? right. And on this day, my lips were, were, were sewn up. And I, she said, what are you doing? And I didn't have an answer. And when she left, frustrated, I was stuck with saying, what am I doing? What are you doing? And I had to ask someone else. I first had to acknowledge, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm under the uh, sort of uh, guise of drugs and alcohol running my life. Right. So I asked someone for help. I didn't want to have to do it. I was a 40-year-old guy who had some success and thought, because you have things, that you have the answers. Yeah. And all I had were things. I needed some, some yes. uh, uh, things. Some... It's amazing, from out of the mouth of babes. Yeah. That truth shall set you free. Right. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, for people who may be struggling uh, with addiction, is there any advice that you could give to them? Well, to first acknowledge that there might be a different way of life or that you may not have answers for the thing inside yeah. that's got you twisted up. I had an intuition that drugs or alcohol were sort of taking me down. 
and I didn't want to face it. So follow that little bit in your heart mm. and ask for help because there are people out there that have been down this road. I'm one of them that know the pathway back to having your life back because nobody needs to give up their life right. or give up their peace. And that's what I lost was peace. Laughter was gone. Uh, relationships that were healthy were gone. And there's an answer. So you get up and you... And you, you you know who that person around you is that's either sober or started a new lifestyle is. Right. Call that person. Right. I'm so I'm so glad that you came here. You still making music? Hootie Absolutely. The Hootie yeah. the Blowfish has got our uh, Hootie Fest down in Cancun later in April. Yeah, and yeah. so we're making music down there. Four different nights of music with 90s bands. Yes. Bare Naked Ladies and oh, Goo Goo man. Dolls. It's going to be a blast. And we hope to put out another uh, album one of these days and do a tour. I've been putting out my own music uh, along the way as well to try and let people know in a musical sense that the spiritual angle yes. and that there are answers. I just want to make positive, hopeful music. I'm so glad you came here. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Sony's memoir, Swimming with the Blowfish, and his album, Remember Tomorrow, are both, they're both out now.